culture or whatever in the other places in the COVID coaching, but I was telling to the Finnish guys that the, on the other side on this floor there is that bar where you can smoke, that that would be the perfect place for the goalie coaches to have the session, I think. And I don't know about the other country. Maybe that's close to But uh, let's talk now a little bit more about the, the game. The game itself, and uh, maybe this is a little bit of like, like what my philosophy is and, and, and how I think that kind of good goaltending and, and effective and winning goaltending is. And I, I, I like to use these words, the effective goaltending, what it is that the game is so fast today that you always have to be like on the top of the game, one step ahead and always kind of be able to think that what, what happens next so that it's like like compact and and effective and it comes a lot from the from the position uh, positional game. Uh, what I think that in this in this cold ending is great, like we talked with Sami after after the first one is that maybe there is not the one not one right way to play. Still not the one one and only way to play the hockey and uh, and I, I think that it's always about the goalie, okay, if you if you coach like adult goalie or, or junior goalie, for sure it's different, but, but there is not like a one way, and it's about also about the how, what kind of a goalie he is, and, and how, what kind of person he is, how he wants to play. I, I use Bektarine a lot as an example, because I know him really well, and been working with him a couple of times, a little bit, and, uh, back in the day when he started in NHL, started as a number one in Nashville. Maybe you guys know what kind of a goalie he is. He's like an energetic goalie with the quick feet, quick hands. And he was kind of overplaying quite much. And if you think about that, he's 193 or 4. He could be more kind of balanced and stay on the crease and even block a little bit more. Or, or things like that, but but I know him since we were kids, and, and his kind of nature is not made for that because he wants to have fun in the on the ice, and uh, like I think that all the goalies play hockey because it's fun and, and they want to have fun. So if you take that away from him and force him to play like this style, and you have to be like this calm all the time, that would take something away from him. And, and he wouldn't have that kind of uh, fighting spirit and, and not fun anymore. So I would, I would think that he would, he would retire. But still I have to say that he's been, he's been doing really, really good job in Nashville, first with Mitch Korn and then, then with Ben, ben Wonderful, changing his game a little bit more cal calmer style and kind of narrower stance, getting his upper body up in a high high position and, and so on. But it's, it's quite quite a lot about the person of the goalie and person of the goalie coach and the background of the goalie coach. But it's, I think it's a great thing that there is not, the, not one right way. Do you agree on that? That there is not one, one right way. So maybe anyone who is here can be like the one who is saying that this is the only right way. But, if you think about today's hockey, like I say, the game is getting faster all the time. Players are getting faster. The gear is better for the players. The sticks are better. They can, they can shoot quicker, faster, harder, more accurate. So that requires a lot from the goalie. And also uh, the players can play against the goalie. Maybe uh, years ago, only the best goal scorers were good, I, I, and I think that still they are really good in that, that they can really read the goalie and they scout the goalie and whatever, but I think that it's more like, more like a constructive thing nowadays that the teams scout the goalie so the players know where to shoot, how to make the screens, whatever, uh, where are the weaknesses of the goalie. So I think in this one, all the time, goal, goalie coaching should should stay ahead of that, where the players' coaching is coming. And I, I think that somehow I feel like it's it is 
like like many of the coaches who coach players, they say that they feel like the goalie coaching department is the is the kind of department in hockey coaching which is going fastest forward all the time, getting new things all the time, and and. You have to have these old kind of traditional good things there, but but the game is changing all the time, and it takes takes so much time away from the goalie. And right now, if you can, if you watch the NHL, the goalie goalie gear is quite small nowadays. The, what they did for the chest protectors and 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 uh, some other stuff, it's <coughs> like really small, and now they are even hurting because of that. And the net is come kind of kind of narrower from behind so so that that is the thing that limits also the goal is game and, and changes changes it a little bit. Uh, but these <coughs> kind of departments I think that it, it takes from the goalie for sure and, and maybe we talked a little bit about this earlier today and now we maybe talk more about these two. But let's first start again with the groups and, and just you don't need to write down you can write down if you want but just think what what are the kind of main tools or the most important skills uh, for the goalie to be su successful or what today's hockey requires from the goalie what are in, in what is in your okay uh, I think we all agree that it's the most important thing is the mental mental side and it's it's most most of that if you are winning goalie or not but but if you just now think about the maybe a little bit physics game game skills or hockey iq and uh, technical skills take a like a, is that five minutes enough that's enough okay okay let's go again <laughs> <laughs> and let's do it so that after this, every group says the three of the most important things. Three. Let's put three. Und Okay. <laughs> 
Rebounding, you know, when uh, bad things, you know, happen, like you're going to get a goals at some point. It's inevitable, so you have to rebound from that. Okay. Okay. That's good. Next one. So we put like first thing like the the competition. I compete all the time as a goalie. Second, I usually like one of the best at the other time team, like physique shape. And third thing, we like. Be on time, like square, like be in a good right position, like before the shot was taken. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Like kind of a like the same thing spot that you guys had that rebounding back from the easy ball. Okay. We okay. I mean, have like flexibility, agility, coachability, all the type things. Okay. Okay. Well, we think everything starts from the head, the brains, mental strength, mm. working attitude, mm. and then it goes further. Okay. Okay. Everybody's saying a lot of that mental, mental side, which is good, which is good. Right? That's what the game is most, most of the time. Oh, my group just left the room. Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope my group comes back. Uh, technique. Yeah. I think, um, and, um, and angles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we said uh, skating. Yeah, we said it used to be if you were the worst skater, you'd go in there. Yeah. And now the game's flipped, right? You've got to be the best skater on your team. Yeah. Uh, we went down the tools route as well, and we said video. So video is a really important tool for goaltenders right now. Mm -hmm. And then leadership is the last skill. So mm -hmm. be, for a goalie to be a leader. Okay. Good. And well, we had a debate which was a little bit interesting because skills of learning skills that you yeah. <laughs> can learn, like, uh, well, we had the agility. Uh, rebound control, and the third one was well, that's uh, yeah, and being in control, mm -hmm. and then the probably the more genetic ones that you can learn or you can improve to a certain point, but you kind of get a genetic goalie. Let's say if you have a 15-year-old that has a, just a natural ability to stop the puck. And some have it and some don't. Mm -hmm. I think you can improve both of them, the goalies, but I think the threshold is a bit much higher on the natural yeah. one. Yeah, I agree on that one. So we had a little bit of debate of which one you meant. The yeah. other one we can have a, a bigger impact maybe on, on the goaltender, yeah. or what does he have to take with him? Genetically, yeah, much. yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and the first one was the happy sense, how we can help the goalie and read the game. Mm -hmm. Personality is the most important. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second one was the mental health, uh, the views, and the uh, physics, the rest. Uh, Best, for example, best, we can react. Yeah. 
some similarities, lots of that mental mental side for sure. Like, like I don't know who was Mitch Korn who said that 90 percent of goaltending is is mental. So that's how it goes, and I I, I like that. David said that it's it's just like that that you have the kind of that instinct or whatever you call it. But can you can you teach it? Like it's it's maybe the question that that is around forever. That how much as the player side too that some just have the skill and have the eye for the game. Maybe it's the same same in goaltending that you just have to have it, even though how how hard of an athlete you are, but. But somehow I don't want to believe in that, that it's just that you either have it or you don't have it. It's, there's, I believe in that, that there is some, some kind of ways to teach, learn, coach those, those aspects too. I believe in that, but it's, for sure it's easier for the one who has the talent, for sure. Uh, let's go on and always if you have something to ask or, or comment, just just say. Uh, I like to use this as when I have, have been uh, having those coaches' uh, educations in Finland and also we, we showed this actually in Bern for the players when we were kind of trying to uh, trying to put some effort to the scoring that they would realize that hey, I play against the goalie, I'm not playing against this one, but I can also, if I play against these ones, I might have a chance to beat this one. But for the goalie coaches, for the goalies, it's like the, for me, hockey is not the game of shots, it's the game of situations. So how much do we practice these, these things? I think, that these are kind of somehow more important things than even this one. When you do this well, then you will get an easy, easy save. Then you, the puck will come onto your chest or close to your hands if you do those those things well, and you are on the top of the game all the time. And now I, I think that comes what was in the first session. Somebody said that it's like, is it good that the goalie gets 200 shots like rapid fire, which is always especially with the juniors, it's always like really big challenge that do the goalie really have time to do these things in the practice? Which is, I'm not talking about the goalie practices because I know that the goalie coaches can take care of this, but when, the, when there is a team practice, for example, some scoring clinic for the players where the head coach or, or the coach who is taking care of that wants to make sure that the players get as much reps as possible. Do the goalie have time for these? Does he have time for these? That's the question. You, uh, I think you you should work on that also in your coaching staff. That you just talk about that. Can you make a little bit more time for goalie to get it, get set up and move on that pass and get the good positioning? Not that he's just like the the normal. If you, if you think about, for example, normal trees that the hockey teams are doing, goal usually just stands on the top of the crease, makes the save, gets up, makes another save, gets up, makes another save. There is no kind of moves, uh, preparation before the shot without talking about the recovery on the right place. Especially in Finland, I think that has been a really, really kind of problem that we haven't been understanding this one and we haven't been understanding this one. So we, we, we haven't been kind of demanding for the goalie from the goalie that every time when the, when he makes the save with the blocker on the corner, follow the puck with the eyes, follow the puck with the move. That you, you just get up. And if you do that with the with the teenagers, kids, what are they gonna do in the game? What are they gonna do in the game? It's they play just like they practice. Because that's how it goes with the with the adults too, too many times. And again, I take example from, from, from Pekka because seeing him practice with Kalapat in the summertime in Oulu, there's a huge difference between him and the really good SM League, Finnish League goalies. How they do that? 
every drill, it's a warm-up drill for the players, they take the shot after the blue line. He always follows, always recovers in the right place. If there is a rebound for the players, he battles for the, for the rebound. And I think that's the big difference between the really world-class goalie and the kind of a good Finnish league goalie. So, work on this also with the, with the whole coaching staff because it helps, it helps for sure working with the, uh, with the goalies that they would get kind of right kind of rep repetitions also in the practices. Uh, about this, I, I like to do always, uh, I don't know how much, how much kind of you guys do in, in different coaching cultures, for example, what they call it like, like fundamental saves, basic saves, when the goalie steps on the ice, he goes to the net and coach or player is shooting, kind of those easy warm-up shots. I like to do these, that always like that there is something that he has to move and possess himself and then make the save and maybe that recovery comes after that. But I don't, I don't like, like about at all that he's just standing and making that same repetition over and over again. Maybe we, like last year we had this, how we did it was that the first thing especially the first practice of the week was that they just go down on their knees and then, then coach or, or player takes the shot on the block or then on the glove so that they can just track the puck all the way and get the ice kind of also warm up. Some points of, uh, of these things coming up in the, in the uh, next slides, but I think that this is, this is most of the what most of you guys think about the goalie coaching and what is the what is the kind of a goal of goalie coaching, kind of ultimate goal. And for most of the goalies it is too. When you see the highlight reel say watching the highlights from the NHL playoffs, many times, many times goalie has done something wrong because he has to make that desperate save, sliding with his uh, feet wide open spread feet or even dive behind, uh, dive on the puck. Something has, he has done something wrong in here. Do you guys agree on that? For, for the goalie coaches, the highlight reel save is where he's doing everything well before the shot and in the end the puck is here. I'm sure you need that battle too, sometimes. Uh, the skating, you guys lift it up too, or how would the mobile be the other word? I think if you think about the technical skills, mm, this is, if you have to get only one, which is the most important technical skill, I would put skating or moving. Kind of how you can master your edges, how you can master your edges, especially the inner edge, because that's where the goalie moves and also the on the shuffles, how you how you use the use the edge. I think it all starts with the narrow stance. If you look at the goalies nowadays, especially with the juniors, I think it's like a like a false uh, thought with the with the juniors that they think that the goalies are really wide in the really wide stance. If you look at the good goalies, look at the NHL right now, the teams that are playing like Rask narrow stance, uh, St. Louis Binnington narrow stance, Martin Jones, I think he's also in pretty narrow stance. All those goalies today. Grubauer. Yeah, Very narrow. yeah, yeah, he's really narrow, really narrow. I think today Reto Perra is playing and what do you think? I think he has pretty narrow stance too. He a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so he can move on his skates and that's that's the like a false thing if you work with the juniors, put that right. Because if you don't have, if you have two white stance, it's, it's, you're locked. It's hard to move on your skates. And it's kind of a, surprisingly, if you watch the, well, again, if you watch the world class goalies, how, for example, if there is a pass coming across the ice, uh, how close it could be that they can still stay on their feet, moving behind, the, moving behind the shot, making a stop, getting the puck. That they are not sliding. 
they stay on their feet. And that's like, like amazing how, how close it could be. Welcome. Uh, so just work on that. Again, again, from Pekka, an example. Uh, three years ago, before the season when they went all the way to the finals, next year he won the Vezina, uh, they won the President Trophy, so pretty good seasons for him. They changed his stance. He was wide, he was like his upper body was like in here. They changed it. Narrower stance, upper body up like this. And it changed all. It changed everything in his movie. How much more kind of balanced his game, his moving and everything was after that. That's that's really important for the junior goals. Uh, we can always talk about the different techniques uh, that it, I, for myself, I think that uh, I, I try to teach it so that you don't need to make any kind of uh, really kind of strong T pushes. That you can just use the C cut and use the shuffle. That, that's how you move. Maybe if you have some longer passes you have to just open up your hips but then it's like it's, it's not like this kind of a T push, it's more like kind of softer with the with the inside edge. So I believe in that that when, when you move like this, you get a, you are more square when the shot comes. Uh, you don't spend so much time in a kind of not ready stance when you when you have to spread your legs a little bit when when you take the T push. But Again, even though if you're not using the T-push, if you but sometimes you have to open up your hips. If you can do the T-push where you have to open up your hips more, it helps you to move that kind of C-cut moves, where you have to open up your hips a little. Get the point? So the, the point is that, that you have to master all these kind of techniques. And some sometimes you need it. For example, if you it's not it's not part of this, but you Maybe 10 years ago, VH was like everything. Like, if you can't do the VH, you're nothing. Now, if you can't do, do the reverse VH, you are nothing. And if you do the VH, you're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? So, you know, it goes like, you, know, you get the point what I mean. Like, it's, it's that today we use this and tomorrow we use this. And, and, but I think that the VH too is still today it's good tool to master. That even though as a coach, if you, if you favor the RVH, there might be a chances where you need the VH, so why not to, why not to master that one too? But it's, it's not, not in this skating, skating box, but it's a, it's a good example of that. But, and there is, there is situations in a game uh, where you need to do in here use different techniques so you can always find out that best one on that specific situation. Uh, good skating skills is strongly linked on good position. Uh, I, don't, I don't want the goal is to make any saves on the kind of movement that you have to always be able to move, stop, piece it up and make the save while you stand because then you have Probably after that you are more able to play the rebound and recover better. Any ideas, thoughts from from uh, skate? I don't want to get off topic, but what's your opinion on reverse DH and DH? Just in general. Uh, I, I favor more RBH. I favor that more. I believe that it's easier from there, it's easier to kind of recover. It's easier to uh, control the puck, and it's easier to move on different directions. I, I favor that more, but there was moments last year too when both of the goalies were using the BH in a, in a good place, where it was maybe better than the RBH. I, I, I believe in that more. For sure, the physics which we are not talking so much in this, this session now. Never forget the physics. Uh, 
if you don't have a strong core, you can see the young goalies who, when they go down, their core is like a spaghetti. You no, know, it goes like this. And I've seen the goalies, young goalies, they hurt their hips because their core is not strong. That's also one fact that human being is not made for going down on a butterfly or going on the RBH. It's not. It's not kind of a. It's not natural for for human being to be in that stance, but somehow we are in that stance now. So strong core with mobility in the hips uh, takes away the risk to uh, to uh, get injured, uh, go to the uh, hip operation, and also it kind of gives more effort on the game on your moving strong core for sure strong strong and quick feet. Uh, rebound control, uh, in Finland we, we talk more about like it's puck control for us, so <coughs> rebound control is for me like a little bit confusing word, but the but, uh, main goal is that it's always one and done. When the shot comes, that's it. It's not in the back of the net, but it's in the back of your palm, or it's in your, in your body, or out of the, out of the game, I would say. Uh, puck tracking and eyes it's kind of crucial for the good control and it's the most important thing in this rebound control I think the eyes how you can how you can read the shot because there's been lots of uh, different uh, researches about how people react and, and how the goalie react and and so on it's so much happens before the shot is taken the goalie starts to make the save before the shot is taken. Everybody who has been playing in the net knows that. that kind of a, it's easy to make a save on not a, not a good shooter because he's showing you where he's gonna shoot. But a good good shooter, he can fake and turn it in the, in the last second, so it makes makes your life harder. Work a lot with the balls also off ice. We did we did it with the goalies in Bern basically once a week, maybe twice a week. Just different things with the ball, diff balls, different colors uh, with the tennis balls where there is a number and they have to recognize the number. Different, uh, it's hard to kind of tell what, what, but we can talk about that later if you're interested about that, but there is lots of good material also in the, in YouTube on, or in the internet where you can do. But it's like, it's really, really important. And I found out in, in the late of the season that it, it kind of helped, helped them also to play behind the screen. Because we did, for example, the kind of a drills where the goalies are throwing the balls like this, and you have a one ball over there, and you're throwing the ball once in a while, and I have to catch it and throw it back, and then still going on with the two balls with the other goalie over there and then again you throw the, throw the ball so I have to read it. So I think it, it might help also on the screen situation when you realize that the, you're looking at the blue line when the D is taking the shot you realize that this player is coming from here so you know when to change the, change the side. Use of hands, I think this if you think about the Finnish goalies, I think this is the traditional strength of the Finnish goaltending always. They are good of good using their hands. Here's a little just a one video clip. This is from the last game of the of the uh, Eastern Finals. It's a pretty good place where the Justin Williams is taking the shot makes it look like walk in the park. Uh, for sure, like like we talked that if you do everything well, you're gonna get a lot of shots onto your body, close to your body, so how you can trap the puck uh, onto your body is really important, how you can shift and, and lean your body on the right right directions so that it's like especially these ones I think are 
important behind, playing behind the screen that you are you see a lot of balls going like he takes the shot high club goalie goes down tries to make the save like this somebody tips the puck and it goes in from here if you would kind of uh, lean and push a little bit towards the puck you would be going like this somebody tips it's in your body so that you're not just making saves with the with the hands with the kind of long movements for the hands stick and pad angling uh, also sometimes you have to just make the save on with your pads and and kind of kind of block the shot but always that you can you can kind of direct the puck where you want it and it was like I think that the Genoni was really good in this how he could he could use his blocker and pads just to put the box where the, where he wanted. There was some video clips we watched that there was like shot is coming from the from the wide from the uh, glove side and there is two players over there, rebound players. And he kind of puts the puck with his pad just between those players. And he says that yeah I, I saw that there is a little hole I try to put it from there. It was, for me it was like that. Can you really do that all the time? But he was, he's he's really good in that. Uh, lots of kind of dead angle, bad angles, shots coming up in today's hockey. But it, it should go like that it can't turn into a good area rebound. That you are just kind of deflecting the box in front of the net. The hockey IQ. Uh, in this one, I, I think that if you have that good hockey IQ, you can be on the top of the game all the time. You have to read the play all the time. Uh, what is missing from here is being ready. What I think that with the junior goalies in the national junior teams, we have to talk all the time, be ready early enough. You have to also maybe talk it with the, with the adult goalies too, too, and the professional goalies that, hey, be ready early enough. Actually, uh, I don't know if anyone has seen that how uh, HBK won the Finnish national title this year against Canada, game seven overtime. What Rene was talking about that penalty, which was which was uh, wrong call for sure. But anyways, they had the power play and kind of a good shot, but the goalie was not ready at all. They lost the title. The goalie knew straight away that's where Lennon was the goalie. He knew straight away when the shot was taken that. Fuck, I made a mistake when he was like. Uh, so being ready early enough helps you to be on the top of the game. Uh, processing the puck carrier, sure, is like the same same thing as in the rebound control that you can read the player. Is he gonna shoot? Where is he gonna? Where where is he gonna shoot? Or is he gonna pass? Uh, Processing the available pass options against those ones that are not available. You don't need to, you have to recognize all the players, all the four players without the puck. But it, in the same time you have to realize that, okay, this, this player is not in a place where, where the pass can go or RD is taking care of him so well. That kind of, I don't need to worry about that one. But there is another player in the slot who, 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 has, who is kind of free. Stick plays for sure, can the player take a one-timer or, or is it going to be a kind of a quick release after the pass or it's, he's, he's left, the pass is coming from there, you have to kind of move a little bit longer, that you are not possessing, you're possessing yourself on the shooter but on the play. Reading the possible tip options, I think this one is, in today's hockey, this is really, really big, big thing. Uh, because this game is going on all the time, players are thinking how to score goals because the goalies are so good, so tips, screens and tips are really, really in a big role for them. So again, the thing that, are you just going down, trying to make the save here, there is the play tipping the puck underneath your hand or are you going close to the puck, so making sure that your body is behind that possible tip. Lots of work, lots of work on that one. Playing behind the screen. 
Any thoughts? What do you guys think? Totally in the wrong direction in here, or at least sounding right. <laughs> you have one more category, or they're done? No, I have. I have a more? couple more. Yeah. Well, no, it's interesting to know which one you take. Then. Mm. The positioning. For me, the game is so much about the positioning, playing kind of wise, wise uh, hockey. I like this sentence here. Uh, Finnish national team goalie coach Kari Lehtonen, not the, not the goalie Kari Lehtonen, the goalie coach Kari Lehtonen. Uh, this comes from him when he was coaching Jose Saros in HPK. They had this one, that kind of passive positioning and aggressive moves. And I believe in this one because Jose Saros is 178. He's a short goalie. But he never comes out of the, basically never comes out of his crease or he's on the top of the crease, but never comes out. And still, he hardly never gets beaten on the, on the top corners of the net. Okay, the goals, he, get, he, he gets beaten for sure in there. That's his weak spot because he's short, but, but still he's in the NHL. He plays in the NHL. So, so I think it's, it's kind of a... Kind of, I, I like this, that it's kind of passive, this positioning, but all the moves are aggressive. And again, after the move, the positioning has to be there and can be like a little bit passive. And this pa passive here, I mean this mainly straight, staying on the blue ice on the top of the crease, on the top of the crease. Not like deep, I don't, I don't mean that. Uh, so you don't like when Kipper's off is like, Five feet above the top of the Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't like about that so much. Well, for sure, I, I know for the guy I coached last year, Cenoni, he comes out, out from his crease quite a much. But maybe that was one thing I didn't want to change so much. We talked about that, we worked on that, and I, I think that he, he settled it down a little bit, a little bit, but there was still certain situations where he felt like, felt good coming out. So. You don't want to take that one out. But you remember Mickey Kepersoff was like that. Yeah, he was like that. He was like that. And there was a for the long time Finnish goalies were like like that quite much. I have, well I haven't seen Boston playing that much, but I think Rusk comes out a little in in certain situations. But mainly in there. Kind of staying between the post lines that you never play kind of over the post. That you are going to be late in the in the next situation. I like this box control. I don't know if you guys have been kind of learning this one, but it's like you can use the ropes to teach goalie. What is the kind of you can talk that what is the what size is the net? If I'm here on the top of the crease and the shot is coming between the dots, how big is this net in here? Because this is the net that I have to protect, not the one behind me. It's not that big. If you put the ropes from the puck to the top corners of the net, you can see it. And it's really, really good tool for the goalies to use. I really like it. That they, and then they understand it too, that why do I have to be on the top of the crease when he's shooting between the, putt, between the uh, dots? Or if he's, if he's uh, shooting from the bad angle, why can I be, for example, on the post, on the RVH, or just one kind of a edge length out of the post. What if I am kind of on the top of the old goal increase on the side? You know what I mean? That I, I kind of, I am covering the corner of the, of the rink. And what if there is a rebound, then there is a long distance. I, I really like, this is, this is really good that they, they understand the importance of the positioning and also that how sh when, when they are in the right place, how short are the moves with the, for example, the puck is going on the top corner. Only need to do this. I don't need to go like this and make the windmills after that. Have you guys been using the ropes or, or some other two ropes? I like the ropes too. Really good, actually, a little tip is that what's the English word for the, for the how you go out with the dark. <coughs> retractable. Yeah, retractable. Yeah. So you get those are really good. So you don't 
you don't get stuck with those ropes as a coach and hurt your head. <laughs> any other any other other tools you guys use for the position? I never used it, but I saw one was goalie who's travel going deep in a crease. Mm -hmm. So his goalie coach somewhere in the US, he made like you have a crease, so he gave my like 20 centimeters, mm -hmm. and he made like bar and he connected with the net. So the goalie has to go around like a half circle yeah. and on outside, like on top of the crease all the time, because he got like bar behind him. Yeah. But I never use it by story once. Yeah, I, I think I've seen that in the social media too. Yeah, it's like a kind of bar. Yeah, I can be fun. I it myself. Okay. Yeah. You think it, it works out well or? Yeah, for the kid. It's yeah. Very, um, okay, okay. That's interesting. Because the little guys always play the same. Yeah, yeah. They're afraid to go and cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then phones. Just take the phones yeah. from the public. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good tool. I think that's a really good tool too. Really. It's easy like today you have all the techni technology like, like the phone or, or iPad, whatever. It's really easy to use. Like uh, I think I said in the first session we used, uh, in Switzerland you can, in, in the NLA you can get the, uh, we just gave the memory sticks to the TV crew and after the game we got, got the, uh, uh, video from behind the net cam, which is on the on the glass, and it, it was like really good for the goalies. First time they saw that, it was, they were like, "Holy shit, what am I what am I doing?" Because it shows everything. It, you can't kind of you can't cheat on that. On the normal camera you get from the games from the side, you you don't see it that way. From behind the net you can really see it, and it was for all of them was like they were like kind of embarrassing. Some of like embarrassed that oh uh, is that really me? But then it, it it was a really really good tool for them. What uh, I used to we work with Steven. Yeah. And our video guy in the ring he could make kind of like uh, two pictures on the same time. So I have my overhead camera, the goal camera. Yeah. So I have always the goal camera and the normal yeah. situation. And when balls are shots against, you always you see in the same moment you see the overhead camera and mm. where the shot, or how the shot is coming. Mm. And experience has helped a lot for the goal is to see every shot, which angle I am, where I'm standing. Yeah. So you see right away that's the position where the shot is from and where I am. So mm. I thought that was a good, good thing yeah. to have on kind of like two pictures always. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. It's, it's, it's really Sorry, maybe you know who invented that box control? Who? I, I think Swedes. Swedes, sir. I think Swedes. They started to do it like, like when I was starting my coaching career in fin uh, in the in the first education side to part in Finnish Ice Hockey Association. They already had those roles, but nobody talked about box control or. But I, I think that the Swedes has taken that even further like really, really far, and they, if you think of, is there any Swedish coaches in this room? No, or Norwegian, or, <coughs> I, I think the Swedes are really good in that, that when the shot comes from there, if you're here, you're gonna protect this, and maybe somehow it might be for them also a weakness, but it may be, but it's also their strength. It's really their strength, because they, they played that really good, that box control game. I, I would say that Swiss maybe someone has invented that earlier, but Swiss has taken it further. Uh, about the positioning, still, that what happens next? That that's why to stay on these these places. That what happens next? What if there is a pass? Do I have to move long distance? What if there's a shot and I gave up a rebound? Do I have a long distance on that rebound? Always that you can you can be caught. That's an interesting uh, when there's an angle shot. Uh, goalies and they come back sometimes from camps, and, uh, and some of the goalies' comments is that they need to have more mobile butterfly position. Okay. Stretch on their knee, knee flexors, knee yeah. to 
to cover more, which is a plus, but I would enforce. In yeah. my opinion, I would enforce it in the yeah. arguments. But uh, the Nagel pucks, a lot of the goalies don't see the difference. They still do the white butterfly yeah. in Nagel pucks. Yeah, and they. And which gives more rebound. pad room for rebound. Yeah. The skates are further away, and yes. they're, they're moving to rebound. So to understand, again, the different techniques, but using it in the right place, it's a very simple mistake goalies do that uh, they don't narrow their knees in the ankle pucks. They yeah. keep the same length and yeah. width in the butterfly, no matter where the puck is. Yeah. They gave up the rebounds on the shots that are not even going across the goal. Like exactly. Going in the corner. Yeah. corner. Yeah. Not, uh, when you say about short distance to rebound, when you said earlier about easy angle puck to yeah. rebound. Yeah. That butterfly understanding, that's... Uh, and you tell a big goal, your knees can be like this. Mm. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. When you look at using box control or ropes or whatever, mm. see that that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's three. Uh, about the positioning still, uh, was earlier also there about when the when the play goes goes to the uh, dead angles, it's important to stay between the post lines. Uh, we did a lot of work last year, and also with uh, when I was with the World Junior Team because the Germany was always always in the in North America, so in the small rig. We did a lot of kind of a simple drill. You can actually draw it in here. We have a pen, but I don't think that we have. Anybody have a pen? Marker. Our coach is in <laughs> Yeah. Holy <laughs> yeah. Because I think it's the challenge is that you can you can find a post in the in the quick rushes when the player is kind of driving in from the blue line uh, from the boards. Uh, RD forces him in the in the in the narrower angle and in the end he goes behind the net or whatever. So how this is simple drill we did. Where's the face of dots? So just that the player gets the puck from wherever, but he has to have a have a speed that he's coming coming in from here. And I had a cone about in here, the first cone, the second cone, okay, this drawing is not the good one, but, but you get the point. Another cone in here, and he can shoot from, he can take the shot from here if he wants, or he can fake the shot and come here, take the shot in here, or even use the speed and wrap around or jam from the short side post. Really kind of a simple drill and we made it like a more and more and more challenging by moving these cones closer to the net and different variations for that. But I, I, I think this was really good, really good skill. And when Pekka was practicing with us in August, that was also one point from him was to, was just a simple thing. Like if he start players here, and you just throw the crease in here that you start from here and you shuffle, shuffle closer to the post in the end you have your edges like about like this then the last, this last push how you can find the post with the edge is like really kind of hard move because you have, you have your uh, edge outside of the post for a second and then you have, a, have to just get it, get it on the post this was one of the drills we tried to do basically almost every week. Just to make the... And, uh, okay, it's just the one little little thing in the game, but, but in the end it might go like the opponent has the rush, comes just like this, he goes around the net, you slide over the post, game goes in here, stays in the corner, blue line, DD, one timer with the screen, the puck is in the back, back, back of the net, and it's because you're late in this one. But you were late in the first place in here, so it causes that maybe seven or eight seconds later, the puck is in the net because you were late eight seconds ago. You know what I mean? Get the point. So that's why, that's why we did, did that a lot. 
kind of an idea that the moves always end to the post. For example, the rebound moves, that you are not sliding over the post, because again, then you are kind of trailing in the game. You are coming behind. You have to be on the top of the game all the time. Uh, so the recovery is from the posts. Uh, where is the right place to go down on the RVH or VH? I don't know. Is there any kind of a kind of a low body thing that always when the puck is there you have to be down on the RVH because it's always about the how much room does the player has? Is he righty or lefty? Uh, whatever you know, it's it's not that black and white that you have always in this case you always have to be down. We have 10 minutes actually. This is this is the last last one. The facetiness, competitiveness, maybe the again what is the most important thing. But if you don't have this, like we like we talked in the first session, in the second session, both sessions, that the difference between the average and the top is I think almost this. How much do they battle in the practice? What are the habits? And I believe in that, that even though if you're a professional goalie, you have to somehow practice like you play. And it's about this thing too, that you always compete, always battle, always fight for the pucks. It's, it's the thing that connects the top goals. In the end, from the first session to just, just always try to remember this. And I think that the goalie coaches are a little bit ahead in this one than the players coaches who has a big bunch of bunch of jerks to coach. I, I think it that way. Okay. Any any questions? I have, a, I have one question, like, in your opinion, what is the goal of the future? Mm. If you're looking at the like, future, because I am, like, let's say in USA Hockey, what is the head guy? And he's saying he's coming back, like you said, Soros, I don't pronounce yet, sorry. Mm. But he said, like, he is the goal of the future, because mm. he's shorter, he's catching the puck, and he got great advice control, even if he's smaller. And yet, like, he's more, more mobile than bigger goalies and stuff like that. So what do you think is the future goalie? Yeah, I, I think that it's it's like maybe it's not like that you have you have to be short now like but you know like it's going on that direction how how he plays or if we take him as an example uh, I think it goes on that direction how you just Saros plays the plays the position not like maybe maybe a couple of years ago it was more like that you have to be big so that you can block the shots that you have to kind of block quite a lot. I think it's going more like on that active, active style again. I, I believe because the players are getting better. Here is getting smaller. Maybe in some day the net is bigger too because they don't know how to beat us. So they have to cheese somehow. But I, I, I think that that's. I, I think Saros is a, for me because I know you so well. So uh, for me, he is like a like an example that if I I could like a build the goalie like. If you get the tools done and this and this, and I would build the goalie just like he is. To me, he's a good, good example of that. Well, what you're saying there is interesting. What you were saying that we are goalie coaches are more in front of developing the game than others. My question is: It's good to separate goalies and the others, but I would, I would challenge the thinking of we need to work more with team coaches. There's still a lot of clubs and countries where goalie coaches are working volunteer. Clubs don't have budget for goalie coaching. Uh, goalie coaches, yeah, you do your stuff 10 minutes and the rest is our stuff. Uh, drills, head coaches running practice. You can probably all agree as former goalies or goalie coaches that you're getting center line shots between the dots. Who's getting better? Players? Goalie. So where is, the, I mean, I, I spoke about this with some of my fellow goalie coaches. Uh, we need goalie coaches, I think we need to, we have become stronger in the market. 
but I think it has to be much more open uh, uh, and challenge the club managers to hire goalie coaches on a better full-time salary. We're all here saying if the goalie's not good enough, you don't win. Head coaches lose their jobs if the goalie coaches are not catching the puck. Or sorry, goalie goalies are not catching the puck. But then goalie coaches are once a week coming in. They're not fully paid. They get minimum ice time with the goalies. Their resources are limited. Who are we kidding? And that's the discussion I'd like to see. There's a lot of good people here, a lot of smart coaches. We put a lot of time traveling to camps and seminars in, in USA and listening to different things. And, but then we come to reality where head coach has, let's say, play numbers, million. Assistant coach, 500,000 is half. Goalie coach, max 100. The hierarchy is there. At the same time, goalies are the most important people in the entity. So I would turn that thinking around. What's the future goalie? I think we're doing the right things. Physical training, mental training, technical training. I would turn around and if you have a goalie like Sados, or you have a goalie like Lundqvist, what kind of defense do you have in your team? How do you coach your defense? Would you coach your defense differently if you have Sados or Lundqvist in the net? I would. Because I know what strengths I have with Sados. And I don't know what kind of game Lundqvist plays. And if you put Broder, it doesn't play anymore. He would take shot instead of a pass. 100%. He said, let him come, I'll take the shot, you'll take that pass. That was his way of playing. So I would rather challenge that idea as a team manager, GMs, build your defense around what kind of goaltending you have. And that involved future goal that has to connect with your defensive style. <clears throat> you can't have a goalie who can do everything. Yeah, and I, I, I think that it, it happens all, all the time right now too, is that the goal is kind of goalie and the defense and the how we play is like connected, connected on together. Especially the P cases that how does the goalie like to play, that do we leave the uh, guy in front for him or do we leave this passing lane open and it's... it's where, where did you have that discussion? Finland? Yeah, for example in Bern. Yeah, Finnish coaches. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's but also that we ask from the goalie that do you want do you wish that this yeah. player is open? I know, yeah. but that's the philosophy. Yeah. Finland is known for a good goaltending, mm. and goalie goalie coaches and goalies are having their time. To, uh, it's a tradition. Mm. But yeah. if you go around and or, well, my personal experience working in, in Germany, in Austria, uh, Japan, Norway, uh, there is no there is no communication there. Yeah. You do your stuff, you're the goalie coach, you take care of those guys, and we do ours, and uh, and uh, if you let three goals, then you come, hey, Sam, or whatever your name is, what's wrong with your goals? So it's not my goal, it's our goals. Mm -hmm. And then that's, it's unfortunately, I feel, in professional hockey, we're still there. I don't know how it is in your clubs and environments, but uh, that's how I feel. And then we're talking about being mentally strong. Goalies are, for some cultures and coaches, goalies are aliens. And they, they don't feel they're in there. And, and that starts from kids blaming the goalie when he's letting too many goals. So I think it's, it's a big thing that goalie coaches, we need to do, I feel it, a lot of work to get into the management, coaching staff, discussing like hockey says here, that'll be an excellent situation where you can talk to a goalie, he comes to your head, how do you want to play defense? How do you want to play this PK? How can we reorganize our defensemen according to your goalie skills? That would be, I think, fun for goalie coach. Yeah, sure. Sure it is. That's just fine. Hey, time is running out. We have to be in three minutes downstairs. Uh, today is the game Sweden, Switzerland. I hope Lundqvist is playing for Sweden. I know Perla is playing for Switzerland. What should we look in, in Perla? In, any good tips that what is his strength? in his game. Now you can tell me because I'm not in Berlin. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he, his strength is he uses his size well. He plays his best probably when he plays a little bit more aggressive. We had some issues a little bit start of the season uh, when he came back from North America. Uh, I don't know if he had an adaptation problem a little bit at the start. We narrowed the stance a little bit. And 
his work with the hands a little bit, catching those pucks a little bit more in front than he did. He did a lot of, of this, yeah. so I hope I don't see that today. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> and he plays the puck pretty well usually. Uh, He's pretty good at that. He, sh he goes out and makes one pass and the puck usually should be on that. We actually have to play against Freeboy always, like taking away. If, if we have to dump the puck so that he will gain, which was the goal that he won't get it. We have to dump it so that he's not gonna get it. But if he gets it, then don't go to him because he's gonna fool you and pass the pass the yeah. pass by you. you. Just take care of those D's that he has no place to pass the puck. But he's like really, really. He's so good at. He's good, like strong from the hands. But he, I, I think he's like how he sees and how he can fake a little bit and open up the lanes. I think he's patient. Yeah. He reads the game well, he's patient. The only thing we try to worry that he gets to the puck a little bit faster at times. He likes to slow down and watch where yeah. he could probably go a little bit faster and make quicker plays at times, but he, he did a really good job and he worked well. But how to, to your point, uh, this was discussed in our coaching staff really a lot. Mm puck play from the goalie. We had a goalie the year before who was unbelievable. Very brass, so he played the puck like nobody I've seen before. Yeah. And so we, we wanted to use that that weapon we had the year before, we wanted to use that one too yeah. uh, this year. And actually both goalies, we have a younger goalie, a Swiss goalie too. They did an excellent job too. Yeah. Okay, hey, now we have to be downstairs, so thank you guys.